that both of them benefit greatly from living in the same household as somebody who takes pride in knowing how to gain strength and speed and quickness. They have an inherent advantage in living with me. Right? They have an inherent My daughter, who is 16, she um, is strong. She can dumbbell press relatively comfortably 60 pound dumbbells. Uh, she can do 70s for, you know, with some help for a couple reps. My son has been, you know, one of the better players on his basketball and football teams for just about all of his life. And he's been deemed quick and, and um, fast, even though, you know, I know, you know, my bar for him is higher. Uh, but, he, but he's been deemed and called quick and fast. My daughter's, you know, she's turning into, you know, a pretty strong individual, male or female. I tell you that because they are fortunate to live with somebody who understands how to get big and strong and fast. My son, in particular, is being raised by a father who was never seen as fast or quick or big and strong early in my life. Now, I got faster, I got bigger, I got stronger, but I wasn't seen that way. I wasn't I was never the better, the best athlete on my team. Um, so the both of them benefit greatly from living in the same household as somebody who takes pride in knowing how to gain strength and speed and quickness. They have an inherent advantage in living with me. Right? They have an inherent advantage in being the son and daughter of a fitness professional. They have an inherent advantage of being a son and daughter of a person who played college football. That that's an inherent advantage that they have that many kids don't have, that most kids don't have. Part of what the challenge is that we face as a nation. Part of the challenge that black people have is the reluctance of white America, the ignorance and disregard for the fact that white America has had an inherent advantage for almost all of America's existence, certainly for almost all of black people in America's existence. There has been a purposeful, legal, right, mandated, and authoritarian created advantage that is inherent for white people. And part of the anger and frustration that we have as blacks is that there is a disregard to acknowledge and accept it. There's certainly a disregard to try to fix it in any real measure or real way. But, but putting that aside, there's a disregard to accept it and acknowledge it. So for me to sit here and not acknowledge that my kids have an advantage because they live with me would be silly. Right? It would be silly if, if, if the parents who hire me to train their kids did not feel in their hearts that I had an advantage because my kids were raised by the same coach they are hiring to train their kids. Right, So that's where the breakdown is because we want to be heard. We want people to acknowledge that we have been given by way of mandate 
by way of, of barriers created, by way of restrictions that were created. We have been denied opportunities for a fair chance at success. And on the flip side, white America has been given an inherent advantage. Right? One would argue, one could argue that the two predominant ways to be successful in America are through home ownership and property and land ownership and higher education. Both of those have been restricted from black people. Right? Both of those have been restricted from black people until around when I was born, the 60s and 70s. Right, when all this went down, I asked my sister, who's very knowledgeable, who's my, my role model, my, my hero, I asked her, what can I read to learn more about just how the laws were created to restrict home ownership? And she recommended a book called The, the Color of Law, which I've just started reading. But it talks about how there were legal rules and laws in place to prevent black home ownership, the primary builder of wealth in our country. So there was almost no chance I could have a parent who could, who could have earned and built equity to pass on to me. When you couple that with the fact that until recently, there was almost no opportunity for higher education in the black community. Those two barriers have prevented wealth building, have prevented education and, and, and skill building in our community. Directly, lawfully, legally. So to not admit and not acknowledge that there is an inherent advantage to being white is, is, is demeaning, disrespectful and it does not help the conversation right and there's reasons why we do that right I get upset if people automatically assume that my kids are, are great because I'm their father because it removes all the hard work they've done in fact my daughter just started working out right until a couple of years ago she didn't want to see any kind of fitness she despised team sports. She was a creative type, drawing and singing and dancing and doing, you know, funny videos. Right? She only recently caught the bug to be fit. And I didn't force it on her. And those who know me and know her know that's true. Right? My son, right, I never force him to work out. I encourage it. But I didn't make them, so I get upset because, because the, the, the assumption is that, that it just happened, right? And, and they are where they are only because of me. And I'm saying no. So, so one, in one way, I understand why people would be upset because if you're successful and you're white, the assumption, at, it, it, the assumption is that it's only because you're white. I'm not saying that. The same way I would get upset if someone said, oh, Jackie or Amari are strong because you're, they're your they're, they're kids. No, they earn that. And by implying that I'm the reason, it removes the badges of honor that they earned to be strong and be fit and be fast. Right, but for me to, to ignore the fact that they have an, an inherent advantage to the point to when they were ready to get big and fast, they knew where to go. That would be silly for me to ignore that. Right? So they have an inherent advantage the same way white America has had an inherent advantage. And the other side of that coin is that if you have not taken advantage of that advantage, you feel kind of silly and embarrassed and ashamed. Because if you grew up with a person who could give you knowledge and teach you how to be big and strong, or be lean, or be fast, and you did not take advantage of it, that would make you feel really silly. 
So there really is no no. It's a no win situation if you're if you're one of my kids, and the analogy if you're a white American because if you're successful. You don't want to give away all the all the grind and all the effort and all the all the results that you got. You wanna you, you wanna own that because you earned it. So I understand that. But to 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 forget and deny that some of that came inherently, that you started the race at the 50 yard line, to coin a friend of mine's phrase, which is perfect, and I started at this at the one yard line, to ignore that would be Silly. And again, if you are a, a white American and have not taken advantage of the inherent advantage, then that argument makes you feel silly or upset or embarrassed or ashamed. So there's no win. But all we can do as America now is conversate about it and acknowledge all the things that have happened. Right? Do what I'm trying to do and educate yourself reading books. I'm starting with this one. Again, it's called The Color of Law. And it goes through all the rules and laws that were in place to prevent black ownership of homes, which is why my great grandfather or grandfather or father didn't have any home ownership to, to, to build equity and to hand down to me to have a money in place to send me to college. I went to college based on my sports and based on grants, but how much easier would it have been for all of black America if we had had home ownership? If our parents and our parents' parents had had easier access to college educations. So we have to be honest as a country about the foundation and the building blocks of our country. Even if they're not fun to look at. Even if they're uncomfortable to talk about. And one of the major things we have to begin to talk about is the inherent advantage of white America. And that's not to say anything about where you are in your life and where you got. All it is is to say this is what our country was built upon this is how it advantaged certain people. This is how it disadvantaged certain people. And let's begin to talk about it and move forward. All right? But until then, until we, until we admit what has happened, until we own up to where we are and how we got here, and not use it as an excuse. I'm not saying that because that kid next door doesn't have me as his parent, he shouldn't try to beat Amari in a, in a race. Even though he doesn't have me as a parent, his parent may be you know, overweight or know nothing about training. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying black Americans today should just feel sorry for themselves. What I am saying is that we get angry when, when, when you refuse to acknowledge that there was and, and has been an inherent advantage to being white. I don't like using the, the word you know, white privilege because that sounds argumentative, right? I mean, some people say, well, it is what it is. Maybe, but what good is it if we're arguing? So I prefer inherent advantage to white privilege because to me, it, 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 it sounds less argumentative and it speaks to the, to the fact that that inherent advantage, advantage could be in a lot of things. A lot of ways. Right? So, let's continue to educate each other and ourselves. And continue to get better and move forward. And continue to open up wounds. And talk about it. And heal. And love. And cry. Argue sometimes. But let's continue to get better, as my sign says, every single day, as individuals, as races, right? And as the human race and as the country that we live in. All right, guys, I love you, right? Let's continue to get better and continue dialogue and continue to grow as human beings. Love you. Bye-bye.